Happy New Year boys and welcome back to the channel. This time we're going to take a look at X-Men Legends 2 Rise of Apocalypse for the PlayStation 2, PC, Xbox, GameCube, PSP and the Engage. And yes, I literally had no idea what an Engage was before making this video. But anyway, um, this game was developed by Raven Software and published by Activision. The game was released in the year 2005, exactly one year after the first game, which makes this game look even more impressive. Because they pretty much improved everything from the previous game. Well, almost everything. They created what I call a perfect sequel. With the only catch being that if you didn't like it, the previous game, there's a huge chance that you won't like this one either. And the game is an action RPG that lets you take control of four mutants. There is loot, there is dungeon crawling, and there are skill points. So yeah, imagine Diablo meets Gauntlet. So let's talk about the improvements. Um, the game features 15 main playable characters with three secret characters that you can unlock by playing the game. Magma, Beast, Jubilee, Emma Frost and Psylocke are gone. They are replaced by Magneto, Toad, Scarlet Witch, Juggernaut and Sunfire. Unlike in the first game, you have access to the main cast right after you clear the tutorial. This is something good because you can play with your favorite mutant from the start of the game. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but in the first game you had to unlock Psy yeah, you unlock Psylocke pretty much at the end of the game. But now you can play with whoever you like pretty much from the start of the game. This is the first game to introduce um, exclusive characters. For example, the PC version features um, playable Sabertooth and Pyro, and the PCP version um, features um, Cable, Cannonball, Dark Phoenix, and um, X-Man. What you're seeing here is footage of the PS2 version. It's upscale uh, to a higher resolution. That's why the game looks nice. Yeah, but if you're going to play this on a PlayStation 2, yeah, don't expect things to look um, this clear. Um, this time the game features online play, which was a missing feature from the first game. Um, this game was made with co-op in mind. A huge part of the experience is playing this game with, your, with a friend, with your bros. So if you're planning on playing this on your own, be warned that the game can get a bit repetitive. Another nice feature are blink portals. This time you can easily return to the main hub by using blink portals. This is a great feature because it gets rid of the annoying backtracking of the first game. I really hated backtracking to a save point in the first game, you know, just to change characters because I was missing someone and to solve a puzzle. Now returning to a save point to change characters or selling items is barely an inconvenience. Loot also got an improvement. Item variety in this game definitely got a, a major improvement. Um, this time you definitely have more options to customize your heroes with gear. And there is also a hero stash that lets you save gear, meaning that if you find a high level item, you can save it for later without having to waste an item slot on the inventory. There are more mutant powers to use this time. In the previous game, each character had only two attacks, one buff, and one extreme power. This time, characters usually have two buffs, two extreme powers and a bunch of extra powers. And to compensate, now you can finally respect your characters, meaning that you can try different powers and see which one you like the most. In the previous game, once you spend a skill point, the skill point is gone and you were stuck for the rest of the game with whatever crappy decision you made. This time you can go back to the previous level to collect missing collectibles. Um, in the previous game, once a mission was complete, there was no way to return to find whatever thing you were missing. There is also replayability. Yes, now you can unlock a hard mode once you finish the game that starts you with, at level 45 with enemies at level 50. And you can also transfer your progress from normal to hard, so you can keep all your gear and extra skill points when starting a new game on hard. Something really cool is that this time you don't have to finish the game to unlock um, new costumes. Yeah, you unlock new costumes just by playing the game. And there are also team combinations. So depending on what characters you are using on your team, you might get a team bonus. Like for example, the Age of Apocalypse for, using, for having four characters with um, an Age of Apocalypse costume. That's something really cool and you're going to see this um, return in Marvel Ultimate Alliance. So yeah, this was definitely a great addition to the game. Danger Room is back and there are different rewards like extra stat points and extra skill points based on your performance. There are also three secret characters. You can unlock Deadpool by finishing the game once. You can unlock um, Professor X by clearing every Danger Room mission. And you can unlock Iron Man by rescuing 
um, Tony Stark on Act 5. You can do this by collecting four beacons on every act and finding a piece of Iron Man armor on every single secret level. Or you can just be like me and use a cheat code to unlock them all. The game is a bit longer than the previous game, it's around 20 to 25 hours long. It's definitely longer than the Ultimate Alliance games. I don't think the game has pacing issues, but I feel like for a lot of people this is going to be a bit too much, especially if you don't have a friend to play the game with you. Yeah, it's definitely going to feel a bit repetitive. We need to see this game from a different perspective. I mean, 15, 20 years ago, RPGs used to be obviously different. Gaming was just different to what it is today. Um, these days, RPGs, you know, this, the, the main story is just a tutorial to get you to the end game um, so that you can start grinding. Yeah, things have completely changed um, for RPGs. Sadly, there is no way to buy this game on PC in 2022. I don't know what's happening between Marvel and Activision these days, but don't expect an HD remaster anytime soon. Yeah, it's definitely a shame. Polaris. Polaris, she's been abducted. Indeed, Charles. It appears we both have a grievance with Apocalypse. I don't know if you guys remember, but the first game um, ends with a sequel bite, with Apocalypse announcing um, his return and treating Professor X. The stuff of legend. Enjoy your small victory, Xavier, for the age of Apocalypse is nigh. And this is what this game story is all about. Apocalypse is back and the X-Men and the Brotherhood are going to team up to stop Apocalypse. The first change you are going to see is on the cutscenes. The CGI cutscenes in this game look amazing. It's like a day and night difference with the first game. Violence is all humanity has to offer us. Doesn't he ever shut up? Your speed and strength have been augmented. But what of your soul? My soul is filled with hatred, rage, and death for the X-Men. The second thing you are going to see is that Magma, Allison, you know, she's gone. Now this is what I find odd. I mean, she was the protagonist of the first game and pretty much saved everyone and even Wolverine says, um, you did kid, we truly are X-Men legends, but now she's gone and so is the, X the X-Mansion. Yeah, in the first game, the X-Mansion was the main hub. Um, it was a place where Allison was able to interact with our X-Men, but yeah, now it's gone. The X-Mansion in the first game felt like a fateful recreation of what I've seen in the comics and cartoons. And this time we have those hubs that kind of feel soulless. I guess it makes sense in the context of the game with Apocalypse being a global threat and the X-Men and the Brotherhood pretty much moving from one part of the planet to the other, but yeah, it kind of feels like a big change from the first game. We have five different hubs. Um, we, we only have a small amount of characters to interact with. That's one of my complaints with the game. Some NPCs. Yeah, the first game felt like a celebration of the X-Men universe. And this one, kind of missing that. Um, some NPCs and villains have unique lines, depending on who is on your team. This is a nice feature and something you will see return in the Marvel Ultimate Alliance games. You said she was cute? Well, of course everyone thought you and her were hitting it off. But it was nothing. I was only paying her a compliment. Please, if I've wronged you in any way, I beg your forgiveness. You are the only one for me. <sighs> oh, all right, you big dummy. You know I can't stay mad at you. But if I ever catch you even thinking of looking at Scarlet Witch, I'll rip out your eyeballs. Got it? Yes, I understand. I am so grateful things are back to normal. Now perhaps Magneto will leave me alone. The mission briefings are back, but this time they are optional. And the Brotherhood completely steals the show during those. Well, most of the X-Men feel like, yeah, they are just barely there. Juggernaut is a complete jerk with everyone except Wanda and Jean, and I love it. Red, you're not only easy on the eyes, you're smart too. What do you say you and me hook up later? I bet you'll find out being bad is kind of good. You've just crossed a big line, Juggernaut. Wanda is the voice of reason in the Brotherhood. 
Toad is just a dummy. Also unknown. Why do you people bother having these little brief and soirees when all you do is raise more questions? They ask these questions so that when we're out in the field, we know what to look for. Thanks, Wanda. Now it makes complete sense. Go ahead. Keep talking, Chuck. <clears throat> and Magneto as well. Magneto. We have 15 characters, but only four of them are part of the Brotherhood, meaning that you are going to see Joker now, Toad, Wanda, and Magneto a lot. On the other hand, I think characters like Sunfire and Bishop, they, yeah, they appear like twice and they barely say anything. So if you know those characters from the comics, then yeah, I think this game is not going to teach you anything. When the main appeal of the game is having the X-Men and Brotherhood team up to save the day, keeping most of those interactions as optional kind of feels like an odd choice. If you don't care about the story, I think this is going to be something good for you. I mean, you do spend quite some time on the expansion in the first game, but for me, well, I feel like they could have handled this a bit better. Ah, this is my favorite part of the video. This is where I say, you know, this is where I give you a quick rundown on each character. And I really want to see um, the comments, what team you guys use, but let me start with um, Colossus. Yeah, Colossus definitely got a nerf from the previous game. He was absolutely um, a beast in the first game. This time he's all right. My favorite power is the Siberian Express. Unless you charge into enemies, it's really fun to use as long as you have the energy, of course. And the Thunderclap is nice, but it definitely doesn't feel as good as it did in the first game. Most of my playtime with Colossus was um, spent thinking, man, I should be just be using Juggernaut instead. I don't know how to say this, but I just can't believe they made Toad good like he has no right being as good as he is um in this game toad has two different types of powers tongue and speed attacks there is a mastery for each type so you can pick one and spend all your points this time i spent all my points into the tongue attacks on top of being a good fighter he can also buff your entire party so yeah for all three or four fans of toad Good news, he's a good character. Storm. Um, Storm has two different types of powers, wind and lightning. I found the wind powers to be underwhelming, so I spent all my points into enhancing and storm lightning powers and mastery. Like Colossus, she got a massive nerf. She was godlike in the first game. This time I feel like her powers are too expensive to use. And, you know, they just don't do enough damage um, compared to other characters. However, one of her extreme powers can make the entire, the entire party immune to all damage. Yeah, that's really good. Wolverine. Now we're playing with power. I think Wolverine is even better this time. And he was already good in the first game. Tons of damage, healing factor, one of his powers can instantly kill enemies. And the chance to instantly kill um, someone is really high. So yeah, he's pretty much broken on high levels. So if you don't want to think too much about team combinations, you can choose um, Slap Wolverine on any team and he's going to do great. He's definitely a powerhouse in this game. Nightcrawler, like in the first time Nightcrawler, still great. His teleport powers are really useful for exploring the map and finding secrets. He's, he has one of the most powerful um, extreme attacks in the game. A nice support um, that helps the party save energy. And like in the first game, he can save teammates from dying. That's, yeah, that's, you really want that on your team. Same as Wolverine, you can slap him on any team and he's going to do great. What I like about Gambit is that you have options. You can use him as a melee character fighting on the front line, or you can make him a ranged character and draws cards. Or you can just make a hybrid character and do whatever you want. But yeah, I just wish um, he had very extreme powers. This is a complaint I have with a lot of characters where the extreme powers are just, uh, but if you like it Gambit in the first game, you will feel right at home here. The team buff um, Gambit has is really, really strong. Bishop, well, for Bishop, we no, we're no longer going to use cards. We're going to use Gans, but yeah, they even have the same team buff. So there is no reason to use both Gambit and Bishop in the same team. I feel like Bishop is really energy hungry. Personally, I just prefer using Gambit. He seems, yeah, he definitely seems a bit more reliable, but I prefer um, Bishop extreme powers a bit more. Not by much, but yeah, I, I will just go with Gambit. Scarlet Witch, one is one of the best support characters in the game. She can increase your team damage or convert damage dealt into energy. And that's really useful if you want to keep spamming mutant powers. At high level, some characters pretty much get um, infinite energy. So yeah, she's really useful on teams. The hex attacks are okay. I think they are, are too slow and, the, and damage wise, they are just okay. The main reason to have Wanda in your team is for her support powers. 
really, really good support powers. I mean, with Wolverine, I, I pretty much have infinite energy when using Wanda on my team. Now, Jean Grey, in the first game she was broken, this time she choose, yeah, she's only great this time. Her powers are missing some damage, but like Wanda, she comes with a support power that can convert damage into energy. Seriously, throw Wanda or Jean into your team and you won't have to worry about the energy. She can pretty much solve any puzzle, so you really can't go wrong with Jean on your team. Overall, she's better than Wanda. Her powers deal more damage, she's very useful for solving puzzles, and her support is good on any team. So yeah, Jean, not broken, just great. Like Jean Grey, Magneto is really good for exploring the map. I used Magneto for most of my playthrough this time and didn't have to worry at all about puzzles since he can um, build bridges, fly, move objects, and yeah, he can do whatever you need in the map. Except, well, teleport. Now for a rigid character, he feels very tanky. He can buff the entire team with mutant powers or make himself even harder to kill. Sadly, um, his extreme powers are garbage, but feel, yeah, but feel like a waste of time. But Magneto is definitely a really good character to have on your team. Cyclops. Like in the first game, I just dump all my points into focus and then spam optic beams. And that's pretty much um, Cyclops gameplay. They did a better job with Cyclops this time. I feel like each power feels different. I strongly recommend that you try all of them till you find the one you like the most. Like Magneto, he can buff the entire team and increase um, XP and combo damage, but overall, I think Magneto is going to be the superior option for your party. Juggernaut. You only need to know three things about Juggernaut. He can charge into enemies like Colossus, he can grow in size when punching enemies, and his extreme power, Path of Pain, lets him kill enemies in one hit. Yeah, Juggernaut is really good, his passives are good, definitely one of my favorite characters to use um, in this game. He's really good, I think Wolverine is better, but I don't know, I feel like Juggernaut is just a bit more fun to use. Um, Rogue. Like Colossus, I feel like Rogue was better in the first game. I found her to be a bit slow compared to her melee characters. Being able to steal powers sounds cool on paper, but it, I, I think I barely use that power. She can fly and kill the party, so at the very minimum she doesn't feel like your traditional brawler. But yeah, you're better off using someone like Wolverine or Juggernaut. I really like the Iceman this time. A lot of fun powers to use, he can pierce enemies, being able to slow and freeze enemies is always useful. Sadly, his extreme powers are garbage, but yeah, I think Iceman is great this time. He was good on the first game, but I feel like this time they did a better job with Iceman. Sunfire, on the other hand, you know, he's fun if you like um, spamming fireballs. Has a nice melee power, but he likes Iceman, um, freeze and slow effects. He's not really a popular X-Men, so I wonder how many of you actually use Sunfire. So yeah, if you like Sunfire, leave a comment below saying I'm that guy that likes and playing with Sunfire. Deadpool, for a character that you unlock when you finish the game, I was expecting a bit more from the Merc with the mod. He feels like a side grade to Nightcrawler. I just ended up preferring Nightcrawler. Deadpool only has a small amount of power, so don't expect much um, variety when playing Deadpool. Yeah, he's just a nice bonus um, for finishing the game. Considering that you need to unlock and complete every single Danger Room mission, Professor X is just alright. Like Deadpool, he only has a small amount of powers, um, but being able to hold enemies is good. He can also revive enemies, yeah revive enemies, um, team members, but yeah, he was freaking OP in the first game, but you only got to use him during a small section of the game. But yeah, like Deadpool, he feels more like a trophy in this game, yeah. And finally, we have Tony Stark. The only thing you need to know about Tony is that he's really freaking strong. Yeah, he's easily one of the strongest characters in the game. That's pretty much it, yeah. That's it for Tony, he's really, really freaking good. And that's it. What the end, my friends? I still think this is a great sequel. It pretty much fixes most of my issues with the first game. My only real complaint is well the story, just you know, the different approach I'm designed with the story, but for the most part, this is a great sequel. Thanks for watching, um, thanks for everything. If you want to support the channel, you can do um you can just leave a like, leave a comment, or whatever people do these days to help people out. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video as much as I did um, playing the game and making this video. But yeah, thanks for watching and see you see you guys soon. Take care, amigos.